Hey, I'm back. Um, sorry for the snafu. You no know, puts us eight minutes over time, but I finally got it figured out. It did take it to another new format. So I just went ahead and switched the old format. Uh, so let's try this again. So somebody sign in. Thanks a lot, Marcus. Appreciate it. Um, new format. So I clicked it back to the old one. Okay. Uh, Neat, is everything going all right with the biggie today? Hey, Alex. Uh, Alex Lathrop has joined us. You know, Alex uh, um, is a big uh, advocator for um, um, autism. And Alex, uh, I guess we share the same month, Parkinson's month and, and uh, autism month. So please, everybody out to there. Uh, tonight, support autism as well. Good to see you, John Wall, the magician. Um, Robin Taylor, my good friend. Eleanor, good to see you. Uh, Troop, definitely on tonight. Good to see Troop. Jim Sherman, 10th Mountain. Um, best, best statistician and sports statistician in all of North Carolina. He and his brother Bob are just absolutely magnificent. Sergeant Colbert, my boy. How you Malinois doing? Moose has just been overworked tonight, so he's chilling. And you can see he's a bit camera shy. Hey, Mary, good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Bull's here tonight. Um, so tonight what I'm going to talk about with Parkinson's is, of course, the COVID virus. But I want to take it. Uh, thanks, Marcus. Appreciate the AOK. -okay. Um, in my five by five, Craig, um, I want to talk about the COVID virus on two different ends. Um, I've done some research and I got this information. Uh, and sorry, I'm looking down at my notes from Dical, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Michael S. Okun. He's Parkinson's Foundation Medical Director. And then Dr. Fred Southwick from uh, University of Florida, the infectious disease guy, uh, and the University of Florida is a, a Parkinson's Foundation Center of Excellence. So um, the, the the data that I'm going to talk to you about and some of the questions that they were asked through the Parkinson's forums. Um, Excuse me. Uh, you're getting a straight scoop from the guys and gals that know. Uh, so first question that was asked to these fellas was, um, are people with Parkinson's disease at a higher risk uh, of, of getting the COVID virus or developing it? And uh, those with the, uh, Parkinson's disease are a high risk group. They are not at a higher risk, but they are a high risk group. Um, and the reason that they're a high risk group is because of the loss of tone in the chest um, a lot of times, uh, folks with Parkinson's disease, uh, Parkinsonisms, Parkinsonians, whether it's functional or idiopathic, um, the disease uh, causes a weakening of the muscles in the thorax, which in turn uh, lessens the capability of to get deep breath uh, function, uh, deep pulmonary function into the lungs, so it makes you more susceptible to um, Parkinson's disease. Uh, the second thing, and Craig brings it up, is the autoimmune, the low immune disease. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not disputing what Craig says because he's living it. Um, but uh, do people with Parkinson's disease have a compromised immune system? And um, people with Parkinson's disease, those with PD, have an intact immune system that functions well. And that's according with what Parkinson's disease uh, uh, aficionados say. Excuse me. But in turn, what would those that have it say? So those who have it would disagree. That's anecdotal evidence, which means one person communicated it uh, with the other. And then what the, the research says would be another. So I think uh, a laboratory research 
um, but versus anecdotal, anecdotal's level four, and um, you know, laboratory research can be anywhere from level three to one. So take as it is, I'm not gonna argue that point. I'm just telling you what they say. And then my good friend, Craig, um, who has Parkinson's, tells you that, you know, we have a low immune system and he may have a low immune system. And I know folks that, that um, have Parkinson's that do have immune, uh, immuno uh, system um, issues. Next thing, should I get my pneumonia shot? Okay, there's some question mark there. Um, if you or your fam, that's right, Craig, everybody's different. Um, if you have a hypersensitivity to inoculations, uh, i.e. pneumonia shots, i.e. flu, or anybody in your family has had a serious adverse reaction to flu shots or pneumonia shots, my recommendation, uh, even though immunology is not my thing, uh, sports medicine is, I would recommend to stay away from that. As Karen, my sister, who's on tonight, thanks for Karen being on, KK, can, can validate. We had a family member who had a flu shot, had had them before, boom, has one, ends up in the hospital for, uh, for months and took her over a year to recover. Uh, bad reaction. Um, so uh, everybody's individual. Uh, I personally don't have, have never had a pneumonia shot. And I've personally never had a flu shot, nor will I ever have any of those because of my uh, family history. So the, the scientists and the medical doctors who know better uh, through clinical trial recommend it. Uh, number four, uh, are we more prone to lung issues, folks with Parkinson's disease and uh, any of the Parkinson's diseases, meaning Parkinsonism, uh, Parkinsonian-like, functional Parkinson's and idiopathic. And that's what I'm gonna talk from. Um, they do have a diminished lung capacity. And we've already uh, visited that by saying that the loss of the thoracal tone uh, causes difficulty. <sighs> Excuse me. Hey, Suzanne, good to see you. Daryl, good for you to be on tonight. Um, it causes difficulty, like I said, deep venting pulmonary function getting the air down in, into the lungs deeply, and then having the hour, the power, the hour, the power to do a forcible exhalation to where you're clearing, inhaling and then exhaling in the clearing motions. Okay, I've already addressed the flu vaccine and the pneumonia shot. Hey, Dr. Gunner, good to see you. Thanks for coming on tonight. And uh, yeah, we'll stay safe to you to you and DD stay safe as well. Uh, medication questions. <clears throat> Any advice on medication? Uh, the doctors recommend that you contact your physicians. <clears throat> I can't stop that. I apologize. Though. I recommend that you, uh, the doctors from the PD foundations recommend um, that you um, try to get a 90 day supply um, therefore, you um, spend less time at the pharmacy. You reduce the risk of uh, being exposed, uh, <clears throat> and you reduce the risk of actually just seasonal allergies and, and, and seasonal issues. So um, <clears throat> if you have difficulty with uh, getting a 90-day supply, uh, do direct so solicitation to your insurance company and um, just remind them that yes, you know, the medications I take, even though you may not know what they are, like if you call Caremark, if you belong to the state of North Carolina's insurance, most folks that work at state of North Carolina's insurance, Blue Cross Blue Shield know who Caremark is, but um, um, they, they don't fight it unless you just got a new prescription. <sighs> I really apologize for that. Um, this is also a bit alarming. Get, stay on the pharmaceuticals, so try to get a 90-day supply if you can. And if you can't, you, you 
you directly uh, communicate with your insurance company and then if they don't help help you then what you do is uh, solicit the help of your physician your primary care provider whether nurse practitioner your pa and your pharmacist and a lot of times they can they can pull off a miracle as well all righty going to the the over-the-counter medications please make sure that before you buy an over-counter medication uh uh, let's say for allergies, uh, common cold, rhinitis, you know, sinus issues, uh, ear issues, please make sure that the over-the-counter medication does not uh, um, have a negative interaction um, with the medications you're taking. And then, of course, your best source with that is your pharmacist. Um, Excuse me. Good to see Marty and Tom on tonight. Thanks for um, watching the show. Sorry, I'm having some speech things tonight. Um, also, one reason for that 90-day supply, and uh, I'm going to uh, just read this directly. Uh, it says, should I prepare for a shortage of Parkinson's medications? And the guys at the PD Foundation that I talked to you about said, yes, the safest thing you can do is get a three-month supply of your medications. We've already discussed that. There will likely, this will likely get you through the worst of the coronavirus issues in a case of a shortage uh, emerges. Right now, in areas where the medication factories are located, like China, they are starting to get them back up and running. It does further say one sentence or two sentences down that a uh, um, significant number of our medications, of course, are made overseas uh, in the Chinese market, but um, the medications that we take, um, the Parkinson's community takes, um, even the stuff I take for the myoclonus that I have and the dystonia um, is manufactured in China. So we have to be careful and uh, I don't like to be political, but I'm going to um, just say something straightforward. You know, uh, President Trump and uh, his administration and the Dems and their issues, you guys got to come together, work together and get that mess straightened out because we don't need to be dependent on anybody for anything. We're the greatest country in the world and we ought to be able to take care of our own, take care of our people manufacture our own products and keep it on our soil. Therefore, if we run into something again like this, we don't have to worry about where are the next masks going to come from? Where's the next uh, uh, lorazepam going to come from? Where's my clonopin going to come from? You know, where's my insulin going to come from? There's going to be enough needles. Are they going to uh, have enough inhalers? How about the EpiPens? You know everything so you know we got to get our act together uh politically and, and we need to start looking out for our own people uh, a little bit better than we do we do a good job but we can always do better so um you know in addition to that i'm going to talk about caregivers as well i'm going to shut up now because i'm getting fired up about that mess over there in china um, and how that's affected my country and your country you know I don't see many people going from the United States to go live somewhere else. See everybody coming here because we're so, so incredible. Uh, should I keep going to my doctor's appointments? Call your doctors first. Hey, Aaron, good to see you, brother. Um, call your doctor first and see what they suggest. With telemedicine, uh, you can do a lot over telemedicine. They can call your script in over, you know, over their communication that they use. And sometimes you can have a delivery of your medications to your home. But if they do that, please make sure make sure that you sanitize the container that the medications brought in like a box. Make sure you have your gloves on. Make sure that you sanitize that box. You get the medication out, sanitize that medication. Uh, treat that box like a biohazard. 
double bag it. And then don't forget to wash your hands with soap and water for a minimum of 20 seconds, okay? If you look on the internet, if you look on Facebook, there are wonderful videos demonstrating how to appropriately wash your hands. I didn't get this um, link, I failed to do that and I apologize, but there was some stuff on Facebook today of a person that had a set of gloves on and they used some kind of black substance, maybe shoe polish to get on the gloves. The gloves were uh, skin tone and then they demonstrated um, how to wash the hands. So it was a really great uh, video and that is a safety uh, issue. So remember, if it comes from the outside and you bring it to the inside, uh, sanitize it and, and treat the container like a biohazard. And once you put it in a double bag, seal the top. Um, so everybody be safe there. <clears throat> my Parkinson's affects my blood pressure, okay? Uh, I wanted to step back for a minute. Let's say you think you're having a medical emergency, okay? Um, one thing that you could do other than, you know, notify EMS and get them to your house um, is have the, uh, the family members that are helping you or people that are helping you to notify the ER. And this is a Parkinson's uh, Association recommendation to let them know that you are coming and that you have Parkinson's. That way they can treat you in a little bit more of a expeditious manner and more in an isolatory manner as well, meaning that they can minimize the contact of individuals coming in to treat you while you're at the ED, okay? Uh, <clears throat> my Parkinson's affects my blood pressure. Um, how might COVID-19 affect me? Uh, in general, most Parkinson's medications um, or some of them, a good number of them, do lower your uh, blood pressure. And usually that's in supine laying on your back. So going from back to seated and seated to standing, sometimes we have orthostatic issues. Um, however, if you were having that, then make sure that you have good hydration, you have good socks on. Um, thank you, Suzanne. Suzanne talks about there's a video that tells you how to clean your groceries and other items against the coronavirus. Thanks for providing that link um, so you guys can access that. But like I said, hydration, compression socks, um, abdominal binders are all good to keep your pressures up. In addition to that, make sure that you, the foods that you are consuming because of a change in diet related to a grocery shopping to try to get bulk items that can stay um, um, uh, contained for a while. Let's say you're not eating a lot of canned foods that we know have salt in them. Uh, so you buy a bunch of canned soups and SpaghettiOs and all that, and then you start eating them because they're inexpensive and they can be stored a long time. Uh, you're increasing the salt, which can throw your, your levels off, which can also cause a problem with your blood pressure and your medications. Uh, so please um, be careful with that. If you have to add a new medication to your uh, regimen, the pharmacist uh, will make sure that the, what you're taking and what you have on file um, will work together. Um, the nice thing about that is that I learned from my pharmacist that they have to go through uh, three sources and those three sources um, have to be from different, um, uh, let's say PDRs, physician desk references. So one can be a Merck, one can be a Gray's and, and one can be um, a Jennings, let's say, just to make that Jennings name up. And of course, this is all electronic and then all three sources do come together and say, this is cool, you can do this. So uh, don't worry, they'll manage you. If you have any questions, contact your pharmacist and uh, the pharmacist or the pharmacist tech hopefully can answer your question. Uh, should I travel? And the answer is no. Uh, no ground travel, no flying, okay? And it's just an exposure thing. Um, and that exposure thing, uh, if you've got to travel, 
it needs to be a, a family emergency, okay? Uh, I'm gonna say something a little bit morbid, all right? If you have a family passing and, um, you know, you have to go to the funeral, you can always um, uh, delay that, uh, reschedule that. And I know that from uh, being involved in the military uh, in Arlington, there's sometimes three and four and five and six weeks wait, and sometimes there's months wait to be interred in Arlington. And usually they have the, the funeral then, uh, near when the person passes um, at the church or wherever they have it, and then uh, they wait several months or weeks before they inter um, the uh, soldier, sailor, or marine, or airman, or coasty, um, and U.S. congressmen and former presidents. Um, the other thing is weddings. Um, as you can see, a lot of weddings are being called off because of the stay at home and the uh, social distancing um, um, parameters and guidelines. Uh, I know if, if, if my daughter was getting married, uh, I would encourage her strongly. Why don't we just wait till this thing clears? Uh, why don't we just go ahead and stop? You know, marriage is gonna happen, but let's just go ahead and moose down, behave. Um, why don't you plan it for later on? Um, a lot of people go to a lot of expense to be involved in weddings. And often what happens is, you know, the person says, well, I'm getting married anyway. We'll have the reception later. That's not a bad idea. But um, we all in this together. Um, we have to think about each other. Uh, and we have to think about other people first. And, um, you know, we, we can take care of ourselves. And, but we also need to think about if, if I expose myself to other people, what can happen? And if other people expose themselves to me, what can happen? We got to just start thinking about each other. Okay. I want to talk about one last thing here. I've gone about 25 minutes and I'm going to talk a little bit more about caregivers. And um, this was brought to my attention um, today, I was talking with a friend of mine. We were checking on each other. And um, caregiving is a, um, a um, serious issue in any of the neurological disorders which create movement problems or cognitive issues. And for example, in my family, um, Marianne is considered my caregiver. And um, so if I get sick, um, she is still there. Now I'm real functional, good and functional, but um, because of a lot of medication changes and you know a, a new diagnosis to work with. But for friends of mine that have um, a spouse that is their direct caregiver and they only have one caregiver, say it's just a wife, okay, or just a husband, meaning just just one person. If that person gets sick and the person with Parkinson's or dementia or any movement of the movement disorders or any of the cognitive disorders um, um, gets sick, their caregiver gets sick, who's going to help if they're that dependent on that caregiver? Then what you have to consider is one, do I need to bring another family member in to help take care of the person that has the disorder? And what happens to the person that has the COVID virus? Are they locked in on a 14-day quarantine with the Parkinson's patient or dementia patient or the, let's say the neurological disorder patient? Do they all stay together? You know, what's the protocol on that? What do we do? Um, do we got to contact a healthcare provider to have somebody come to the home to take care of the person that has the neurological disorder? But if the person with the COVID is there and they're 
they're isolated and they're not hospital bound, then does that person take care of them? Uh, it's really, and Craig's talking about caregiver relief program. Um, um, it's really a confusing time for that. So my suggestion is this, is you know, you always gotta have a plan B and a plan C because a good battle plan never survives first contact. So what if, if I uh, became ill, I would request me being the, the person with the movement disorder, I would request being removed from my home and being placed in a hospital or at least a nursing facility to eliminate myself from my missus, okay? The thing is, I don't know if that's advantageous or not. They really haven't talked about that on the news. I tried to find some stuff on the CDC, Center for Disease Control, and I couldn't find much. Uh, but if I do find something, I'll post it. So again, it's complicated. What do you do? You know, my philosophy is to take care of make sure that Mary Ann's good to go, and I just be isolated away, and then she is given a caregiver to make sure she's okay and that, that she's being checked on. Um, that's how we would do that. Elim isolate the virus and then isolate the individuals been exposed and then have the appropriate um, folks come in and see her every day. And thank God because of our neighborhood, they're right up the street. Um, and Bob says a lot of issues in nursing homes up there. And he's from New Jersey, exit 91. The other thing is um, in the Parkinson's community where uh, a lot of support groups are, there's a lot of, none of them are essentially uh, have face-to-face -face contact anymore because of the stay at home disorder, uh, disorder, stay at home um, orders. Uh, this can cause an isolation where Parkies feel that they're isolated. Uh, those with neurological disorders feel isolated. Uh, what if they're living alone? Um, or what if their caregiver is an essential and goes to work every day and you're by yourself and you can't go to support group, you can't go box. Um, you're saying, well, you have all that electronic media to use, you got you know, Facebook and all those, you know, communicate that way. But that face-to-face -face engagement that a support group gives you of having some of the same or the identical disorders, um, that that's cut away. And for the folks here in Shelby, um, they didn't have one after um, the, there was one at a time, but it closed down because the uh, kind person that was running it um, um, got sick, their symptoms got worse. Um, and, um, so when we started up the other one, we were clicking right along and then this happened. And so we're now we're isolated. So we're trying uh, several things, uh, Facebook, of course, text messaging, um, we've sent some um, videos out of exercises to do and at the same time sent exercise routine. So at least they have that small part of the support group. But what they don't have is the one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so we all need to do a better job of trying to get acquainted with uh, um, the virtual world, so to speak, and get on Zoom, FaceTime, um, Messenger, Skype, whatever you can do, and touch base with your family members. Um, I guess that about closes it out for the night. Um, I, I, I just want to say thank you to all of our uh, folks on the front lines in our EMS and um, um, <clears throat> um, these guys and ladies are just uh, just uh, the selfless service that they give to be on the front lines to fight an unknown enemy um, who constantly is on the move and is in a kinetic environment. Uh, everything they do you know, the long hours, the lack of sleep, 
you know, sleeping in their garages when they get home at night so they don't expose their families to this. Um, that's, that's a new American hero there. Um, EMS, law enforcement, and fire, you know, I always talk about them. Um, countless, countless, just countless people um, serving us first in, in, um, in total disregard um, for their uh, personal safety. Um, so let's let's when we hit our knees tonight, let's um, let's thank them for what they've done and what they're going to do. Um, we are America. We are the strongest country in the world. There's nobody like us, and everybody wants to be it like us. We are it. You know, outside of our borders, the world is a dark place, and we're the light. I've said that before, and I get that from Marcus Luttrell. And I say this, that that um, the only way we get through this is together, not apart. And uh, we gotta hit our knees, we gotta um, reacquaint ourselves with our family, and um, we gotta take care of each other. So uh, that calls it a night. Moose has gone to sleep, he's taking a break. Uh, for all you out there, I'm gonna start drinking. Okay. I might actually hit two Virgils tonight. That's going over the top. But I want to thank you for being on. Alex, thanks for coming on tonight. Remember now, Alex Lathrop would support autism as well because it is Autism uh, Month. Take care, Tom. Thanks. I uh, appreciate you for always watching my flank, man. Uh, God bless. And always remember, embrace the shame.